fairy tale. The Razorbacks had just come off another heartbreaking season, but this year, something would be different. Maybe it would be the seniors stepping it up a notch. Maybe it would be the coaching staff seeing a team coming together. Or maybe it was just the tradition of being an Arkansas Razorback. Before the season was over, Razorback football fans would have memories to last a lifetime. Because this year, the Razorbacks would celebrate an unforgettable season. A season of firsts. It was October 13, 1894, when the University of Arkansas football team officially took to the gridiron for the first time. The Fort Smith High School Grizzlies took a 42 to nothing whipping that day from the college boys up north. About a month later, the Arkansas Cardinals, as they were known then, made a first trip to Austin, Texas to challenge the Longhorns. Texas upended the Arkansas team 54 to zip and began a rivalry that would last almost 100 years. In 1908, Hugo Bezdek became the first full-time head coach at the university. The ball club went 7-0 the next year and established a reputation as a fierce competitor. Bezdek later said the team played like a wild band of Razorback hogs. The name stuck and so too did the tradition. The Razorback football program excelled through the 20th century. Arkansas had become recognized as one of the country's most successful programs through the 50s, 60s, 70s and 80s. But in the summer of 1990, Athletic Director Frank Broyles, along with the University's Board of Trustees, made an announcement that would change the face of Razorback football forever. Chancellor Ferritor, the Southeastern Conference proudly invites the University of Arkansas to be the 11th member of the Southeastern Conference. The transition would be tough, however. Coach Broyles had selected Jack Crow to lead the Razorbacks into the new era after the departure of Ken Hatfield. Crow's tenure ended before the first SEC game had ever been played. In the interim, defensive coordinator Joe Kynes was called on to lead the Hogs. Kynes' season would start off gangbusters with an opening 45-7 win over another SEC newcomer, South Carolina. The old guard of the conference would, however, not fall that easily. Midway through the season, Kynes called on old friend Danny Ford for some help. Together, Kynes and Ford would see the Hogs through two more conference victories, including a nail-biting 25-24 victory over then third-ranked Tennessee in Knoxville. The next season, Danny Ford was handed the reins of the football program in hopes of turning around what appeared to be a dismal downward spiral. Success wouldn't come overnight. Ford's ball clubs would combine for a total record of 9, 12, and 1 in his first two seasons. The spring of 1995 would sprout hope, however. Little did any of us know, the Hogs were headed for a season of firsts. With the 1994 season behind him, Danny Ford concentrated on the task ahead. During the offseason, Ford made a series of coaching changes that included the addition of a new defensive coordinator, Joe Lee Dunn. This former interim Ole Miss coach would bring with him a tenacious style of defense that brought with it the potential to strike fear in the opposing offense. Ford made it known that the Razorback team of 1995 would also be more physical. By the second week of two-a-days, there was an unmistakable feeling of optimism in the air. This summer when we were going through summer training, guys come in, busted, but even though it was 100 degrees outside and nobody really gave up, everybody looking forward to a goal, uh, reaching a bowl. And most of the guys stayed up here this summer. You know, that showed a positive sign right there. And, you know, we went in the weight room. You know, we worked hard. You know, I think this is the first year that, you know, we had these many guys stay up here this summer. And, you know, that showed Coach Ford a positive sign right there. But there was one dilemma still looming in the background, the battle for the starting quarterback's position. Barry Lenny had spent the spring playing baseball, while underclassman Robert Reed spent a good part of the fall on Nolan Richardson's basketball team. 
Reed's early departure from the basketball squad to practice with the football team placed him atop the Hogs' depth chart when the team returned from the summer break. Arkansas fans would have to wait until the first game of the season to see who would take the opening snap. Arkansas blew into Dallas on September 2nd to open play with an old Southwest Conference rival. The SMU Mustangs hosted the Hogs in the Cotton Bowl this hot Texas evening. In recent years, Southern Methodist had proven to be no pushover opponent. Arkansas would quickly learn this year would be no different. Any controversy regarding the quarterback situation was diminished when Danny Ford announced sophomore Robert Reed would take the first snap against the Mustangs. A few days later, the evening starting quarterback would leave the squad. SMU drew first blood with his 35-yard field goal by Ben Crossland on the Ponies' initial possession. In the second quarter, SMU went up by 10 after backup quarterback Chris James hit Kevin Thornall on this 13-yard touchdown pass. Senior quarterback Barry Lunny checked into the game on the Hogs' third possession. Looking at a 10-point deficit, Lunny assembled two pivotal drives that would bring the Hogs right back into it. In the second quarter, Madre Hill's first touchdown of the year, followed by a Todd Lateret kick, moved the Razorbacks within three. Arkansas struck again early in the second half. Lunny's six-yard pass to J.J. Metters put the Hogs on top 13 to 10. Another Lateret PAT made the difference four. But the Ponies weren't done. Early in the fourth quarter, Arkansas native Dante Womack broke open for a 37-yard touchdown run that would help propel SMU back on top by three. It all boiled down to the final seconds, culminating on a do-or-die drive. Here's Lonnie, loose football, SMU recovers! Oh my! I can't believe it! Lonnie with the first Arkansas turnover of the game. Arkansas was devastated. What a difference a week makes. Little did the Razorback football team or fans know September 9th would mark a beginning of firsts for the football program. The Hogs welcomed SEC rival South Carolina to Fayetteville for the first game played on grass since 1968. Arkansas quickly unleashed a barrage of offense. It began early in the first quarter when senior cornerback Spencer Brown picked off the Steve Tannehill pass. Arkansas quarterback Barry Lunny then combined a mixture of runs and passes to take the Hogs inside the Gamecock three-yard line. Lunny has them ready to go, second and goal at the South Carolina three. Again, Madre Hill, touchdown! Sophomore Madre Hill's first quarter three-yard touchdown run began what would be a long afternoon for the Gamecocks. Early in the second quarter, fullback Tyrone Henry would add another three-yard run to put the Hogs up by two touchdowns. The Gamecocks scored their first TD of the game early in the second quarter, but the Razorbacks were far from through. On the Hogs' next possession, J.J. Metters came alive with his 22-yard reception and a 31-yard gain off of a reverse. Arkansas was poised to strike again. Todd Lateret would take aim over this drive to boot a 21-yard field goal and put the Razorbacks up 17-7. This game would not belong solely to the offense, however. The Hog defense would be instrumental in backing up South Carolina on numerous occasions as the game progressed. Late in the second quarter, Madre Hill put the ball in the end zone for his second touchdown and helped move the Hogs up 24-7. Just before halftime, Houston, Texas senior Del Delco came up with this fumble recovery to preserve a 17-point margin going into the locker room. The third quarter welcomed the Razorback passing attack. Lenny to sophomore Anthony Eubanks for a 22-yard gain. Lenny again, this time to J.J. Metters, deep for a 32-yard gain to put the Hogs inside the two. Madre Hill took over again, this time over the top for a third touchdown. Arkansas goes up 31-7. The fourth quarter would welcome Madre Hill to the SEC. By game's end, the conference would have to take notice. 
11 minutes and nine seconds to play. Hill goes in for another one yard TD and nears an Arkansas record for the most touchdowns in a single game. Arkansas's defense would be instrumental to Madre breaking the record. On South Carolina's next possession, Memphis senior Marcus Adair would come up with the ball. It took only a matter of seconds and 12 yards to vault the Malvern, Arkansas native into the record book. And Burke hands off to Madre at the 10, the 5, Hill, touchdown! He just Number tied five. just tied the school record. Just tied the school record. Madre Hill was still not finished. Here's a big hole. And Number Madre six. is at midfield at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Madre Hill. Madre, did you break the record? Did you? Yes, oh, yes. 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 I'll give you a ball just for the hell of it. <laughs> when the dust had settled, Arkansas had downed the Gamecocks 51 to 21, and Madre Hill was the SEC Player of the Week. When you put your mind, in, mind to it, and, uh, put the Lord in front of in front of it, everybody prayed hard, everybody did everything they're supposed to do, and good things are happening. I don't care if you have Emmett Smith back there, if your offensive lineman isn't making holes and creating openings, then he's not going to be able to run through them. I never met a back in the world that can make yards when the lines push back in his face. And so you got to give a lot of the credit to the offensive lineman. And Madre did a good job of finding some holes. Of course, I don't get to see a lot of his runs. You know, I fake my hand off and I hear the crowd reaction, and so, um, but it's a nice feeling to have somebody that is from Arkansas and that wants to compete like he does, and you know, everybody's real proud of the record that he got today. Andre Hill came to the University of Arkansas as perhaps the most heralded running back to sign since Brinkley's Jerry Eckwood did so almost 20 years earlier. At Malvern High School, Hill rushed for a career 6,008 yards with 68 touchdowns. These numbers helped Madre to earn two-time All-State honors, was named the Gatorade Player of the State in 1993, and was considered a blue-chip recruit in just about every rating service known. Hill's stock rose in the state high school championship game with runs like this one on a cold, rainy night at War Memorial Stadium. Arkansas fans rejoiced when the 5'11", 182-pound running back made it official in February of 1994. There's so many good programs out there and so many good tra traditions. It's just that you have to find one that best fits you, and uh, I feel that I have. Madre was brought to Fayetteville as an impact player. That impact was immediate. In his freshman year, Hill was Arkansas's second leading rusher with 351 yards and four touchdowns. It was perhaps this kickoff return against LSU that began to open the eyes of Razorback fans. Breaking records and you lose them, but it doesn't mean anything. Uh, individ individually it does, but as far as the team aspect, it really doesn't. And uh, I'm just trying to make sure our team uh, continues to win. Uh, I feel like that aspect of the game will uh, uh, happen if it's, if it's supposed to happen. If not, uh, you know, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure that the team continues to win and, you know, just play my part. September 16th would mark yet another first in Razorback football history. Danny Ford would make his second trip back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama as the head hog tried to upset his alma mater. Redshirt freshman Todd Latterette put the Hogs on the board first with a 27-yard field goal with just under nine minutes left in the opening quarter. Alabama would even it up at three before Barry Lunny took over just before the half. Second and goal, Arkansas at the Bama three. Johnson in motion, Lunny rolls out, looking to the tight end, being chased, still on his feet, Lunny running to the corner, touchdown! But the second quarter belonged to the Crimson Tide. Gene Stallings' defense held the Hogs without a first down going into the locker room. A pair of scores, including this one-yard run. Bergdorf, handoff, and I'll tell you, second effort. Outstanding play by Dennis Riddle. And another deep pass sent Bama into the third quarter, leading 17 to 10. The 10, the 5, and a touchdown. But just as the tide shut down the Hogs in the second quarter, Arkansas returned the favor in the third. 
Not without a couple of gifts, however. Money in the option, the give is to my gray, and it's a safety. Arkansas held the tied defense to only one first down in the second half. Eventual SEC Player of the Week Mark Smith informed the Tide Arkansas would not leave Bryant-Denny Stadium without a fight. Bergdorf backs, drops, firing over the middle, intercepted by Arkansas at the 35, the 40. Midfield, Mark Smith at the 40, 35, 30, 25. Mark Smith late inside hit. the 20 and a late hit. Tacked on that. What a play by the Arkansas linebacker. But the ensuing possession would produce only a lateral field goal. Arkansas would need a touchdown and an extra point to regain the lead. In the fourth quarter, it appeared the snake-bitten Razorbacks of old may be back to their old tricks. A miscommunication on this field goal attempt gave the Tide the ball back and the momentum. But the Hogs held and would begin a final drive on their own 43. Fourth and nine. 150 left to play. And Lenny awaiting for the snap out of the shotgun. Here comes the rush. Lenny, Lenny breaks away. Now throws downfield. It is complete at the 35, the 30. And Lucas takes it out of bounds at the 26 of Alabama. Lenny back. Lenny fires over the middle. Complete the matters at the 10, the 5, the 3 with 50 seconds left. And the ball is at the Alabama 3-yard line. Doesn't make any difference. Ball has got to get into the end zone. And Lenny is back. Short drop rolling out to his right. Lenny fires. Touchdown! Here's the snap. The kick is up. It is good! Lenny's last second pass to J.J. Metters propelled Arkansas into a two-way tie for first place in the SEC West and a victory for the first time over the Alabama Crimson Tide. Hell yeah! Yeah! Yeah, baby! Yeah, baby! We knocked him out, baby! Yeah! Welcome Southeastern Conference football fans to a great evening of college football. The Memphis Tigers arrived in Little Rock on September the 23rd in hopes of accomplishing a task they'd done so well in recent years, upsetting the Hogs. Arkansas, with a new AP ranking of 23, looked to finally shake the Memphis Blues. Hog fans wouldn't go home disappointed. Midway through the first quarter, Barry Lunny connected with sophomore Anthony Eubanks on a pattern that would put the Hogs in the end zone many more times this season. Todd Latterett's point after put the Razorbacks up 7-0. It was Arkansas's special teams play that began to stand and be noticed in this game. Big time pressure here intimidates the Tigers to give the ball back to Arkansas in Memphis territory. Latterett added a field goal early in the second period to put Arkansas up by 10. But this border rivalry was just heating up. A field goal and this 15-yard run by Quitman Spaulding put Memphis right back in it. Arkansas would see one of its newest shining stars unveiled when Lenny found freshman Anthony Lucas in the end zone with just over two minutes left in the half. Arkansas went up 17 to 10. Memphis place kicker Drew Paramore made it a four-point difference with no time left on the clock going into the half. Memphis came out of the locker room strong to begin the third quarter. Barry Lunny looking deep for J.J. Metters, but it was picked off by the Tigers' six-foot, three-inch defensive back, Jerome Woods. The interception led to this one-yard touchdown push by Memphis's Darris Blevins. Memphis went ahead 20 to 17 with 45 seconds left in the third quarter. Arkansas took over, determined not to let another victory slip through the palms of its hands. Barry Lunny found Lucas for a 23-yard pickup. Lunny to Lucas again, this time inside the Memphis 25. Madre Hill then split the defense, going in from the 16-yard line and put Arkansas back on top 24 to 20. But it would be the Arkansas defense that would secure the game in the fourth. Lanaret added a final field goal with just over five minutes to put the Hogs up by a touchdown. Arkansas got the ball back. Barry Lunny took a knee and Arkansas knocked out Memphis for another first in a season of firsts.
It also was a first touchdown for Razorback freshman Anthony Lucas. It's like a dream come true. I've been waiting on this for a while. I thought I was going to get it the last game against Alabama, how I started off in the game, but I guess it's just setting up for this game. The Hogs closed out the month of September with the Commodores of Vanderbilt in Nashville. Arkansas had moved up to 18th in the polls and was looking to improve its record to 4 and 1. The Razorback special teams would set the pace again. On the opening kickoff, Vanderbilt bobbled the ball and had to fall on it inside the seven. A bit later, Arkansas's Jesse Cornelius came up with a bobbled Vanderbilt punt return. The Hogs were poised to strike. Seven minutes and 33 seconds in, Madre Hill hit pay dirt. Again, Madre Hill alone setback. Barry may be changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Vanderbilt showing blitz, option left. Lenny gets the pitch away to Madre Hill at the 20. Hill at the 15, the 10, the 5, touchdown! Arkansas proved why it led the SEC in sacks against Vanderbilt. Junior Soley, Marcus Adair, and Steve Conley terrorized opposing quarterbacks all season. Lunny hits Anthony Lucas here for a 41-yard gain. Third and goal from the four. Barry Lunny scrambles. Flushed out of the pocket, running. Lunny throws into the end zone, touchdown! The PAT made it 14-0. In the second quarter, Madre Hill went back to work. Now Lenny is changing the play at the line of scrimmage. A wide out on either side of the line of scrimmage. Hill with a call at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Arkansas! The Arkansas defense continued to dominate. By game's end, the Commodores would be held to less than 200 net yards. Junior Soley got through here to push Vandy back two yards. This time, Steve Conley and Ken Anderson and Marcus Adair get in on the action. Little Rock freshman Corey Nichols would also shine on special teams. He opened the second half with his 47-yard kickoff return. Later in the third, Lunny scrambles. Out, Lunny looking to throw. Lunny now running. Touchdown! Arkansas goes up 28-0. The Commodores finally got on the board in the fourth quarter. Ronnie Gordon connected with Dwayne Todd for Vanderbilt's only points of the evening. Madre Hill would break loose for another one of his back-breaking sprints. This one accounted for 52 of his career-high 200 yards. The Malvern native would once again earn SEC Player of the Week honors. Houston, Texas senior Marius Johnson would top it off with just over four minutes to play. This 17-yard touchdown run helped propel Arkansas to a 35-7 win and another Razorback first. Sole possession of the Western Division in the Southeastern Conference. I, I, I could tell you a couple things, but I, I'm not going to tell you a couple things. What we can do better, I will work on it in practice. You got a really, really nice job. Defense is about the best I've seen you play in a long, long time. Yes, sir! Yes, 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 yes. Actually, the team was great. And yeah. everybody, now, let me, tell you, yes. let me tell you what I'm most proud about. I'm most proud about after the game, their coach said that y'all was a heck of a football team. Cool. Said uh, he played a lot of people, and that y'all really are a good football. Player. Thank you. And that didn't come from me. That came from your, your opposing coach. He a lot of class in what he said. He was very nice. He wasn't. He, he was. He seems a lot in. Was a great compliment. About a good compliment I ever had a coach tell me that we had a healthy football team like that. So now the seniors, thank you for getting by this one. We got a good income here. The task ahead was to be a tough one. Tenth ranked Tennessee was coming to Fayetteville in one week. October 7th, 1995. Tennessee New Arkansas meant business on the first play of the game. Junior Soley and Mark Smith wrapped up Jay Graham for a three yard loss. Two plays later, Manning dropped the ball, but he recovered. The Volunteers appeared shaken. Shaken, but not out. On Tennessee's next possession, Manning goes airborne for a 55-yard touchdown. The Volunteers put the first of what would be many points from both teams on the scoreboard. 
Arkansas would strike right back. On the Hogs' first offensive play of the game, Lenny to Anthony Eubanks for a 21-yard gain. Lenny to Eubanks again, this time for 14 yards. Arkansas proved early it could move the ball. Second and six from the 26. Madre Hill rolls out for a screen pass. He fielded the ball at the 30 and busted through the Tennessee backfield to help Arkansas tie the ball game at seven. Barry Lenny's passing attack was attacking the record books. This time he connected with Anthony Lucas. The Louisiana freshman breaks one tackle to make it a 52-yard touchdown. Lateret's PAT puts Arkansas up 14 to seven. Hog fans were ecstatic. Early in the second quarter, Lateret added a 36-yard field goal to put Arkansas up by 10 points. Senior nose guard, Junior Soli, then reverted back to the days of football without helmets to sack Manning for a four-yard loss. But Manning would hit pay dirt a few plays later with his 29-yard touchdown. The Vols cut it to three. On Arkansas's next possession, the Hogs go for it on fourth and eight. Off the hands of two volunteer defenders, Anthony Lucas comes down with the football and goes in for the score. Arkansas goes back up by 10. Tennessee would score twice in the closing minutes of the half, putting the volunteers on top 28 to 24. The third quarter would produce only one touchdown as Tennessee moved ahead 35-24. Arkansas appeared to be out of it early in the fourth when the Volunteers went up by 18 points. But the passing records Lunny was chasing were starting to pull Arkansas back within striking distance. Anthony Lucas picked up 22 yards here. J.J. Metters with another big game. This time to Eubanks to put the Hogs inside the 15. With under eight minutes left to play, Madre Hill goes in from the three to help bring the Hogs within 11 points. The Razorback comeback fell short, however. Late in the game, Barry Lunny lost possession. Tennessee recovers and scored once more to put it away. All was not lost, however. In a season of firsts, quarterback Barry Lunny accomplished a few of his own. Lunny's three touchdown passes tied the school career record of 29. Barry Lunny's performance against Tennessee would go down as another bright spot in a collegiate career full of ups and downs. Lunny came to the University of Arkansas in 1992 after turning down an offer to play professional baseball in the Montreal Expos organization. In high school, Lunny earned high school player of the year honors as a senior. His accomplishments also included three all-state honors, two super team awards, and a prestigious spot on the All-American list. Barry Lunny Jr. also helped his father, Barry Sr., capture a state high school football championship in 1991. Lunny signed a letter of intent with the University of Arkansas the next spring. Ironically, it was the Hogs' sixth game of the season against Tennessee when interim coach Joe Kynes called on the freshman to start. Lunny has had only one missed start since then. The 95 Tennessee game moved Lunny into the record books, tying the career touchdown passing record. The senior quarterback would have seven more games to surpass that number and chase a variety of other records. Little did Barry Lunny Jr. realize this season of firsts would help him do just that. You know, I think that as much as I've enjoyed the way things have turned around this year, that, that my family has enjoyed it even more. And, you know, my little sister said the other day, she said, uh, she's not little anymore, she's a junior in high school, but she said, uh, you know, we don't know what we're going to do next year, you know, without these games. And, and this time last year, they were ready for them to be over. And, uh, you know, we're not ready for them to be over this year, and, and it's been enjoyable. Arkansas made an anticipated trip to Memphis on the 14th of October. The Hogs had never won in the Liberty Bowl and were looking to add another notch to their season of firsts. Ole Miss was to be the victim. With the loss to Tennessee, Arkansas found itself outside of the top 25 again. Ole Miss was hoping to play a spoiler role in the divisional title race. The game was measured in feet, literally. Arkansas place kicker Todd Latterett was riding a successful season without a field goal miss to this point. He put the Razorbacks up 3-0 in the opening quarter with his 28-yarder. 
the Arkansas defense once again rose to the occasion. In the second quarter, Rebel place kicker Tim Montz tied it up with his 25-yarder. A little later, a miss here by Montz would prove to be crucial. Arkansas took over, but gave the ball right back. The Rebels would do the same. Quarterback Tracy Cantlope returned this one for 17 yards. They'd go into the half tied at three. Senior defensive end Steve Conley came out of the locker room at the half with business on his mind. Mississippi's Josh Nelson was cut down here for a big loss. With 6.57 left in the quarter, Ole Mrs. Mons kicked the Rebels back on top, however, with his 47-yarder. The Hogs answered. Lunny to Lucas. This one for 35 yards. Laderette's 39-yarder with 4.23 left in the quarter would tie it back up. Arkansas tried to go back on top early in the fourth, but this 44-yard attempt proved to be Laderette's first miss of the year. Ole Miss came back strong. Josh Nelson splits the Razorback secondary and hits LeMay Thomas for a big 42-yard reception. It appeared the momentum was shifting toward the Rebels. Second and 10, Ole Miss sensation Dew Innocent is hit from behind by Arkansas's David Sanders. The Hogs recover. With less than 13 minutes to play, the game is deadlocked at six. It would take a big play to win this ball game. Arkansas went to its not-so-secret weapon. Offensive lineman Russ Brown, Carlos Showers, and center Earl Scott busted a hole open for Madre Hill. By the time he hit the secondary, it was too late. Hill went 71 yards for the game-winning score. Madre was once again named the SEC Offensive Player of the Week, and the Razorbacks accomplished yet another first, a victory in the Liberty Bowl. character by coming back like that because you had a lot of things that you could have folded up so that's the most pleasant thing about what you did you didn't you didn't quit on yourself I mean it's huge I mean it's, I think it's the biggest win that I've had you know as far as dictating the season that I've been here I mean we've had some big games uh, Tennessee my freshman year and some other games but this is the game that's really put us in great position uh, it's gonna be nice to have a few days off and to walk around saying hey yeah we're five and two and and have a little bit of time to heal our bumps and bruises for Auburn and it'll be a big 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 game Barry Lunny wasn't kidding when he said the game with Auburn would be a big one. The SEC Western Division title was on the line October 28, a title Arkansas had never claimed. The Hogs had to accomplish another first before they could wear the crown, however. Arkansas would have to upset Auburn. The fun began early when the Arkansas Special Teams Unit forced a turnover on the game's opening kickoff. Shannon Sidney and C.J. McLean doubled up on Auburn's Robert Baker. Marcus Campbell down the ball at the Tiger 5. It took Arkansas less than a minute to take the lead. Money rolling out to his left. Money being chased. He's looking. Now throws to the end zone. Touchdown! On the Razorback's second possession, Lunny took to the air again. This time to Eubanks, and it picked up 21 yards. Lunny changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Still got some time, got the snap off, throws the ball, touchdown, Anthony Lucas. Madre Hill would play the role of utility back that evening and eventually earn Player of the Week honors in the SEC. Hard-nosed runs up the middle for five and 10 yards caught the Tigers off guard. Lunny looking, Lunny the option. Penalty marker is down, Madre Hill, touchdown. But there's a penalty marker down. It's against Auburn because Carl Johnson's cheering, and the Hogs just got their third touchdown. Junior defensive back Philip Hayes also shined that night. In the second quarter, Hayes came up with one of two turnovers that he'd record against Auburn. Lunny took to the air again, this time to J.J. Metters. The Ruston, Louisiana senior picked up 23 yards on the play. Todd Laderette came on with six minutes and 17 seconds left in the half to put Arkansas up 24 to nothing. Philip Hayes adds this interception to his numbers a little bit later, and the Hogs take over once again. Arkansas ended the half with this Laderette field goal, 
and took a 27 to nothing lead into the locker room. Just as the Hogs expected, the Tigers of Auburn would fight their way back into the game. Stephen Davis dashed any hopes of a shutout with his five yard run three minutes into the third quarter. The Arkansas passing attack continued to pay off. Lenny to Anthony Eubanks, he picked up 43 yards before being pulled down. Laderette would add another field goal to move Arkansas ahead 30 to seven. Dothan, Alabama senior Tracy Cantlope would back the Tigers up a bit more with this interception later in the third. But Auburn scored on its next two possessions and Arkansas quickly realized the ball game had resumed. Junior Soley broke through late to drop Auburn's Patrick Nix for a loss. But with only 21 seconds left, Arkansas led by 10 points and was a long way from being home free. And Nix looking into the end zone, fires it, touchdown! The conversion, throwing it, and it is complete to low, and he's got it. And kicking in that direction, and the ball is going to be covered by Auburn. Yeah, I'll tell you, Arkansas let it go. Razorbacks just let it go, and Auburn recovers the ball with 17 seconds to go. Nick's looking down the middle, fires, and it is complete to Gaucher, who is at the 36-yard line. Let's see, it'll put it at the 42. It'll be a 52-yard attempt to win the football game with three seconds left. Here is the snap, one second. Ball is down, the kick is partially blocked, and Arkansas wins. Arkansas wins as time runs out. The game is over. Oh, oh my. The season of firsts continued. For the first time, Arkansas managed to beat the Auburn Tigers, and Madre Hill became the first Razorback to carry the ball 45 times in a single game. Arkansas was back. We knew that we was the type of team that had to take one step at a time. We knew that we would be an underdog most of the season. Well, the underdog don't have nothing to lose, but everything to uh, gain. Next week becomes our biggest game of the year, and so, you know, we're going to enjoy this until Monday and put it behind us. I mean, hey, you know, it's a thing where we expected to come in and win. It's not a surprise to us. I mean, we may have shocked some people, but we expected to come in and win this football game, especially at being at home, and, and uh, you know, so, I mean, we're excited, we're happy. Uh, we deserved it. They can't take that away from us, and, and you know, we're going to be ready to play next Saturday. We're number one in the West. Arkansas returned to Little Rock the following weekend to open up November play with Mississippi State. Danny Ford's ball club jumped back into the Associated Press top 25 with an 18th ranking after the previous week's Auburn victory. The Hogs were hoping to add the Bulldogs to their latest list of firsts of victims. Arkansas had failed in five previous attempts to upend Mississippi State. A sense of renewment was nowhere more evident than inside War Memorial Stadium this cool fall afternoon. The Bulldogs hit hard and fast. Barry Lunny's first pass of the game wound up in the hands of State's Walt Harris, who went 37 yards for the game's first touchdown. Lunny's second pass would also score a touchdown. This time, however, for the Razorbacks. Lunny again out of the one-back set. Drops back. Lunny under pressure. Rolls out of the pocket. Looking deep downfield. But a man open. Cotton at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Arkansas. Oh, my. What a play by Lunny. On the Bulldogs' next possession, Spencer Brown picked off this Derek Tate pass and returned it six yards to the State 44. Lunny's third pass of the game would also produce a touchdown. First and 10, ball at the 29 of Mississippi State. After the interception, Lunny, short drop over the middle. Complete Eubanks at the 10, the 5, touchdown Arkansas! Mississippi State tied things up on the last play of the first quarter with this one-yard score. Todd Latterette would put the Hogs back on top by three in the second quarter. This 38-yarder would rely on the goal posts to help Arkansas regain the lead. Madre Hill helped to put the Hogs up by 10 in the third with this leap over the back of Winston Alderson. Arkansas goes up 24-14. In the fourth, Mississippi State would get right back into the thick of things. 10 minutes and 26 seconds to play. Derek Tate hit Kiefer McGee for a five-yard touchdown reception. The Bulldogs took over with under three minutes to play and down by three 
Arkansas is becoming an old pro at down-to-the-wire ball games. Eventual SEC Defensive Player of the Week, Stephen Conley, would get to Derek Tate not just once, but twice. Wide outs in tandem to the right side. And Tate again operating out of the shotgun. Third down and 17. They're going to get him back for a safety. Loose ball, but it's a safety. With a minute 59 left to play, it'll be 26-21. Conley got to him on a spin. Arkansas recovered the onside kick attempt, but then go four tries without a first down. Mississippi State's final try would come, down by five points, with a second left in the clock. Back to throw, and the ball is up in the air. It's going to be a battle for it, and it is, oh my, almost caught. Two Razorback defenders were back with the state receiver, Jones, in the end zone, and that was too close for comfort. Arkansas clinched two firsts that afternoon in a season of firsts. An outright conference divisional title and a first ever victory over the Mississippi State Bulldogs. Yeah! SEC West Division champ, baby! Start of the season in August, we picked best uh, last, or maybe last. Some people picked two and nine. The seniors, real tickle to death for you for what you've done, and uh, it wasn't the best game we've ever seen or played. We won. It was a championship. You started off as a pretender, then you're a contender. Now you're a championship. Have some fun. Yes, guys. yes. Go. It's like a monkey off our back. You know, everybody was telling us at the beginning of the season that we weren't going to amount to crap. We picked the last in our division, and we won our division. And uh, I'd like to see all the people who said we weren't going to do nothing. But we're the only person that believes in ourselves, and that's the only people who count. For North Little Rock senior Cotto Cotton, this game also meant a personal first, a first collegiate touchdown. I lost my contact. <laughs> I was like, On that play? No, the play before I lost my contact, and uh, I wasn't going to come out the game, you know, because it's a pass route. So, you know, I just went up there and I just turned my whole body around so I can get my good eye on it. And he hadn't caught many balls all year, but I see that he's pa stayed patient. He's made a real tribute uh, contribution to this team, and well, I'm so happy for him. That's the first thing I thought when he caught it. I was like, oh, man, this is his last game here in his hometown, and, and he catches a big pass, and, and I, I was so happy for him. really was. November snow welcomed Hog fans to Fayetteville for the out-of-conference matchup with Southwestern Louisiana on the 11th. Danny Ford even got in on the action to assure the Razorbacks had a good playing service by game time. But it would take more than cold temperatures and snow to keep away the families of honored seniors like Barry Lunny Jr. and Steve Conley. An afternoon of turnovers for both teams began early when Lunny attempted this deep pass to J.J. Metters in the opening quarter. Vincent Bradford would return the favor a little bit later, however. The interception would pave the way for Arkansas's first points of the game on this Todd Laderette 35 yard field goal. Arkansas took over again when Geno Bell's pop here turned the ball loose. Spencer Brown on the recovery. Madre Hill continued to prove throughout the season that he was indeed king of the hill. This 23-yard sprint in the second quarter would send Madre well on his way to a record-breaking day. With just under nine minutes to play in the half, Lunny goes in for the touchdown. Arkansas led 10 to nothing. A repeat performance of the first quarter attempt at J.J. Metters brought about the same result. But the Arkansas defense would not yield. Steve Conley and Junior Soley wrapped up the Raging Cajuns for another loss. Houston, Texas senior Del Delco then accomplished a first of his own. DeLome looking, firing down the middle. It is intercepted at the 38, back to the 40. Del Delco midfield at the 40, 35. Delco at the 20, the 15, the 10. Touchdown! Southwestern Louisiana soon found out that moving the ball on the Hogs would be plenty of work. But late in the first half, the Ragin' Cajuns managed to do just that. Arkansas's lead was cut to 10. In the third quarter, Razorback senior Steve Conley lived up to his previous Saturday's Player of the Week honors. 
USL is backed up 15 yards here. Madre Hill went back to work on the Hogs' next possession. Here, he breaks loose for a 33-yard gain to put the Razorbacks inside the 25. Then, up the middle again for six yards. Madre capped the 66-yard drive with his 14-yard touchdown run to help the Hogs go up 24 to seven. 56 of those 66 yards belong to Madre Hill. As we move into the fourth quarter, again we see just how dangerous the Arkansas defense can be at any given time. Marcus Adair wraps up the Cajuns for yet another big loss. The defense was just getting warmed up. Mark Smith breaks through a little bit later to cause this USL fumble. Geno Bell is in the right place at the right time. On the next possession, Pete Burks gives to Madre Hill one last time. This five-yard run sends the Malvern sophomore into the Arkansas record books forever. The gain placed Hill atop the school's single-season rushing leader list with 1,302 yards. Arkansas still had three games to play. Ruston, Louisiana senior J.J. Metters also would go down in the record books this day. Metters' seven catches propelled him past Chuck Dykus' 118 grabs for the career catch record. The Ragin' Cajuns finally got back on the board late in the game with a 24-yard reception. Arkansas remained on top, however, 24-13. USL did manage to make one last run at the Razorbacks after recovering an onside kick. But Moralton Spencer Brown put any comeback hopes away with this interception a few plays later. Arkansas moved to 8-2 with a date with the LSU Tigers in Death Valley the following Saturday. We did a nice job winning the football game. We won the football game. That's eight of them. The best I can, right? Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. And wherever that sign says 1995 uh, what bowl? Uh, we, don't get, we still got one working, ain't we? Here we go. Uh, real fine job, defense, offense, kicking game. Real proud of you. We, 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 we can do a whole lot better, but we, that's all right. If y'all just, just going to be that kind of good ball team from now on, y'all just be like that. I don't care. No, 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 let's go. This win, baby. This win. Oh, here we go. Our Father. Who art in heaven, I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So far, you know, we've done everything that we set out to do. We set out to get to a bowl game. We achieved that. We set out to win the SEC West. We've done that. And um, I think next week we got a chance to go to LSU and finish up 9-2 and me possibly probably meet Florida and in, um, in the Georgia Dome. So this game, you know, just just another step on you know on our mission. Danny Ford's Razorback team rendezvoused with the LSU Tigers on November 18th in Death Valley. This end of the season contest has always been a good one. For Arkansas, it was a chance to move ahead in the polls and close out an almost perfect conference run. For LSU, it was do or die on the bull front. The Tigers trudged the opening possession down the field as valuable time on the game clock began to eat away at the Arkansas defense. LSU's first score came off that possession with just over five minutes remaining in the quarter. Herbert Tyler to Shedrick Wilson for the nine-yard touchdown. On Arkansas's first possession, the Hogs managed one first down, then punted the ball back. Almost two minutes into the second quarter, LSU went ahead by 14 with this four-yard run. Geno Bell forced this fumble a little bit later, and it looked as if Arkansas may have a chance to get back into it. Lenny connects here with Anthony Eubanks for 14 yards. But the Tiger defense wreaked havoc all afternoon. Lenny gives up eight yards here. It was as if the first half of the Auburn game was being played all over again. This time, Arkansas was coming up on the short end. LSU scored again to go up by 21. The Tigers went on to score one final time before the half, leaving a stunned Razorback football team in its wake. LSU led 28 to zero. Arkansas tried to get back in it in the second half. Madre Hill picks up 12 yards here early. Barry Lunny Jr. connects with J.J. Metters for an eight yard gain. The defense began to show some promise as well. 
Stephen Conley forces the fumble here. Marcus Adair pounced on it. A little later, Vincent Bradford picked off LSU's Herbert Tyler for a 12-yard return. But Arkansas's offense just couldn't seem to convert. Tyler is picked off again, this time by Spencer Brown. It all seemed to be a little too late, however. Arkansas was never able to recover from the first half. LSU was able to shut Arkansas out on this particular day, but the Hogs still had a date in the Southeastern Conference Championship game with the Florida Gators. December 2nd, 1995 marked yet another first in a Razorback football season full of accomplishments. The Hogs were playing for the Southeastern Conference Championship in Atlanta's Georgia Dome. Arkansas became only the third school to play in this game since the championship's inception in 1992. The undefeated Florida Gators were the only obstacle that stood in the way of a major bowl bid. The Arkansas game plan appeared to take shape early. Danny Ford's idea was to eat time away on the clock while moving down the field. It appeared Arkansas was capable of doing just that. Lunny rolls out and hits Anthony Eubanks for a 12-yard gain early. Madre Hill then went around the left end for an 11-yard pickup. Lunny to Eubanks again, this time for 13 yards. A few plays later, Madre Hill rolled out of the backfield for this screen pass. A haunting gasp fell over the state of Arkansas when Hill grabbed his knee from an apparent turf injury. The Hogs would have a better idea of Madre's status later in the game. Arkansas then settled for a field goal. Todd Latterette booted this 36-yarder to put the Razorbacks on the board first. On the Gators' first possession, Heisman Trophy candidate Danny Werfel pushed Florida down the field 80 yards in seven plays to take the lead. An Arkansas turnover on its next possession would lead to another Gator score. This time, Werfel goes in from the one to help put Florida up 14 to three. Madre Hill then came back in with just under 11 minutes left in the half and tried to reignite the Hogs. But the injury was just too much for the sophomore to bear. Hill had sprained his knee and would later require surgery. Florida added a field goal later in the second quarter to send the Gators into the locker room with a 17-3 lead. In the third, Florida struck again. Werfel to Eric Hilliard this time. A 29-yard touchdown pass put the Gators up by three touchdowns. Any hopes of an Arkansas comeback were shattered when the Hogs moved inside the Florida three on their next possession. Facing a do-or-die fourth-down situation, this late option pitch from Lunny shut the door on any chance of a turnaround. Lunny pitches, and it's intercepted by Florida. This is going to be run back all the way. Unbelievable. Down to the 30. The 20 is Hanks, and Hanks goes 95 yards for a touchdown for the Gators. Florida added another field goal in the fourth quarter to make the final score Florida 34, Arkansas 3. Regardless of the outcome, however, the Arkansas Razorbacks of 1995 overcame tremendous odds few would ever have imagined. A trip to the SEC championship game, a host of school records, numerous individual awards, and first ever victories over Auburn, Alabama, and Mississippi State. Arkansas's list of accomplishments this season will be remembered by Arkansas fans for years to come as a season of firsts.
And Lunny is back. Short drop, rolling out to his right. Lunny fires. Touchdown! 